It's my pleasure to be here with you today and I want to thank the organizers for asking me to be a part of this event. Uh, I looked at the, the lineup and there's a great lineup of speakers the next two days and I look forward to listening to all of the other presentations as well. So today I'd like to share a bit about nanotechnology research and development in the United States and our plans for the future. It's important to note, however, that past research investments have not only laid the foundation for future applications, but have led to products that are part of our daily lives, from smartphones, flat screen TVs, and other consumer electronics, stain resistant clothing, cosmetics and sunscreens, paints and coatings, sporting goods, automotive, aerospace, just to name a few examples. So to give you the context, nanotechnology research and development in the U.S. is conducted under the auspices of the National Nanotechnology Initiative. The NNI was launched in 2000 and signed into law with the 21st Century Nanotechnology R&D Act in 2003. The NNI is a collaborative R&D initiative to advance the understanding and control of matter at the nanoscale for economic benefit, national security, and for improved quality of life. The annual budget requested is on the order of $1.5 billion, and the cumulative investment in the NNI is now over $30 billion. It's important to remember the NNI is a coordinated initiative. There is not a central nanotechnology program or a big pot of nano money. The investments are made by the participating agencies based on their missions, and the NNI is a roll-up of all of those investments. The logos of the more than 30 federal entities now engaged in the NNI are shown here, and you can see a wide range of roles and responsibilities represented. For example, agencies focused on basic research, agencies focused on mission-specific applied research, regulatory agencies, and those that work more closely with industry on issues related to worker safety, standards, and trade. The NNI agencies work together toward a common vision of a future in which the ability to understand and control matter at the nanoscale leads to a revolution in technology and industry that benefits society. The agencies also work together to advance four goals. To advance world-class nanotechnology R&D program, foster commercialization, develop and sustain the infrastructure, and this includes not only the physical instrumentation and facilities, but the model simulation and data, what we refer to as the cyber infrastructure, as well as the human infrastructure, which is the education and workforce development activities. The fourth goal of the NNI is to support responsible development. And it's important to note that responsible development has been a key goal of the NNI since its inception, where research investments focused on the environmental health and safety aspects of nanotechnology, along with the potential ethical, legal, and societal implications in parallel and in concert with research and development activities focused on applications. There is an active interagency working group focused on these issues and a devoted coordinator to ensure collaboration across the entire NNI in these important areas. So over the course of the NNI, agencies have advanced understanding in nanotechnology, environmental health and safety, or nano EHS, funded expansive research and developed a broad array of products to document the progress made and you can see some of those illustrated here, including current intelligence bulletins, guidance documents, and fact sheets. On the left is a recent document from the FDA Nanotechnology Task Force entitled Nanotechnology Over a Decade of Progress and Innovation that provides highlights of their activities and accomplishments. There is a very active international community that collaborates on, this, on, on these issues as well, including the nano EHS communities of research that are facilitated by the NNCO and the European Commission. I encourage you to reach out to my office if you're interested in more information or would like to get involved in these communities. So 
An important role of the NNI is to support the infrastructure required to do research and development at the nanoscale. And that refers to goal three of the NNI, as I just mentioned. The National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy both support networks of user facilities with specialized equipment and instrumentation for the fabrication and characterization of nanomaterials and devices. These uh, pieces of equipment are often too expensive for individual research groups or even institutions to purchase on their own. Um, it struck me when uh, a, a researcher told me not long ago, um, looking back at the early stages of, of her career when she worked at a, a small institution, and, and she said to me that the user facilities democratized science because she had access to tools uh, that enabled her to participate in nanotechnology research that she otherwise would not have been able to do. Um, and I, I think that these continue to be a very important part of the NNI. Uh, the, the National Science Foundation has just renewed the National Nanotechnology Coordinated Infrastructure and, and DOE has also um, announced that they will be making some investments uh, in tooling in their network as well. But these facilities, these user facilities, enable access to thousands of specialized tools to researchers from academia, government, and industry around the world. And there's more information on nano.gov about how you can access these facilities. The cyber infrastructure is also critically important, and I believe you will hear more about NanoHub from Gerhard tomorrow. So the NNI is one of only a handful of R&D efforts in the federal government that has a corresponding coordination office, the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office, where I serve as the director. Our office facilitates collaboration among the agencies and also provides technical and administrative assistance to the National Science and Technology Council and the interagency subcommittee NSET made up of representatives from all of the participating agencies and to our advisory bodies. So this includes working with the agencies to prepare the supplement to the president's budget that serves as the NNI's annual report to Congress. And that's uh, pictured in the top middle uh, in this slide. The NNCO also promotes commercialization of nanotechnologies with a staff member devoted to industry liaison by facilitating a nanotechnology entrepreneurship network and sharing best practices through podcasts, webinars, and workshops focused on the business community. The NNCO is also responsible for the public outreach and public engagement where the, the, the point of contact for the NNI, uh, which we do in a number of different ways. We maintain the NNI website, nano.gov, uh, we host workshops, meetings, webinars, distribute a newsletter. Uh, we also produce uh, three podcast series uh, focused on different audiences and facilitate a number of networks and communities of interest. I mentioned that we support the advisory bodies by law. The NNI is reviewed by the National Nanotechnology Advisory Panel, which has been designated as the President's Council of Advisors for Science and Technology, or PCAST, and the National Academies. The NNI has taken the input from these uh, bodies and evolved over time. So in fact, the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine recently released their most recent review of the NNI. The report shown here is a result of their study and provides high-level recommendations and several detailed implementation recommendations. At the highest level, the finding was that nanotechnology is critically important to many areas and the NNI should continue. The report notes increased global competition and significant investments in nanotechnology in other regions of the world and suggested that the NNI be restructured. They pointed out some things we've done well, such as support for fundamental research and international engagement, in particular with respect to nano EHS, and suggested areas where we could do better with a focus on commercialization efforts. The report also emphasizes the importance of the research infrastructure and education and workforce development efforts. The NNI agencies are working together to consider the recommendations through a comprehensive strategic planning process. We are reaching out to the community for input, so please look at nano.gov or the Federal Register 
for more information on our request for information that was published yesterday and how you can contribute. It's an exciting time for us as we consider the best uh, way to support nanotechnology R&D into the future. We are specifically looking for input regarding what mechanisms and models might be considered for the future structure of the NNI, how we can improve communication with all of our stakeholders, and what topics the community might see as priorities. And what I mean by that are what are the hard nanoscience questions yet to be solved with respect to research? What areas may be poised to branch off into their own fields, like quantum and photonics have done both early focus areas of the nanotechnology community? And what are specific technologies where opportunities exist to accelerate commercialization through collaboration or the formation of public-private partnerships? I encourage you to respond and share your thoughts. Any changes to the NNI will be reflected in the strategic plan released next year. Okay, so going back to the fun stuff. This slide illustrates some examples to show the breadth of the NNI research portfolio. And this is just a very small sample. In addition to applications in space, nanotechnology is helping address infectious disease such as HIV and progress toward a universal flu vaccine, alternative energy batteries and smart glass, in transportation, advanced concrete anti-corrosion coatings, embedded sensors for smart roads, uh, water treatment and purification, food and agriculture, consumer electronics and advanced computing, and all kinds of sensors, prosthetics, and artificial muscle. And this is for the students that might be listening. There's an immense body of knowledge in nanoscience and technology created over the past decades, along with the tools to make, image, and characterize materials at the nanoscale. But we are just getting started, and there are more discoveries to be made and opportunities to build on the existing foundation. In my remaining couple of minutes, I'd like to share a few areas that I find exciting, although I honestly find all of nanoscience exciting. Um, I'm sure you will hear more examples from other speakers uh, today and tomorrow, but these are just a couple of examples that I wanted to share. So while cancer was an early focus of nanoscientists and in, in one of the uh, key areas um, that was mentioned at the launch of the NNI, the ability uh, to detect cancer at the cellular level. Um, now nanomedicine is being used to address a wide variety of diseases for early detection, imaging, and treatment. Um, and looking to future impacts of, of nanotechnology, uh, we, we asked that question in our podcast, what, what do you see to the future? And, and one of our podcast guests suggested the possibility of getting a readout every morning, morning from your toilet. Uh, that monitors various markers so you could catch diseases early. In a step in that direction, the example shown on the upper left, um, cancer was detected in, in mouse urine. Uh, other areas illustrated here are materials for, for chronic wound repair, strategies for fighting sepsis, and an inflatable pill used to monitor the stomach for up to 30 days. Will we be able to literally swallow the doctor someday, as some headlines have suggested? In another podcast, a guest discussed her work in developing artificial, artificial cartilage, and uh, an area that was once thought impossible. And as a runner, I'm so excited to see progress in this area. So moving to energy, uh, one of the things that I've been uh, really excited about for, for a number of years is the concept of energy harvesting. And, and nanotechnology enables this in a number of different ways. And there's been uh, uh, considerable progress in, in these technologies um, over the past few years. I, I also really love the concept of, of localized heating and cooling um, in advanced fabrics. And, and this was something I talked with students about a, a number of years ago, looking at, um, we were doing energy analysis on, on a large stadium and trying to find ways to improve uh, the energy efficiency of this, of this large 
uh, facility and looking at the the auditorium or the stadium and the fact that the air is conditioned um, either heated or cooled depending on the season to make people comfortable in this huge building um, and regardless of how many people are present if a handful of people are present that air is conditioned to make them comfortable and what instead if you made individuals comfortable through their clothing and, and allowed them to be either heated or cooled individually, it just completely changes the way you address that energy issue. Um, and I find that really exciting. So the final area I wanted to point out is in water. And, and this, again, is going to be a global challenge and will continue to be. Um, nanotechnology is enabling better sensors to detect contaminants of all kinds, applications in desalination and purification methods, point of use water treatment. And the example I've shown here is uh, developed by Argon is the oleo sponge to help clean up oil spills. And, and these are just a few of many important areas in food and agriculture. Nanotechnology will help address uh, issues of food abundance. Um, and there are already improved packaging technologies and sensors to prevent or detect pathogens. Consumer electronics and advanced computing will depend on new architectures and materials at the nanoscale. And I am sure you will hear additional areas of nanotechnology research and development over the next two days. Past investments in nanos nanoscience and nanotechnology have, have built a foundation to enable us to more quickly address critical issues that are emerging. The knowledge gained regarding the behavior at the nanoscale and the tools and techniques developed are having an impact on our COVID response in the vaccines under development and in the protective gear, in addressing the opioid epidemic with alternative pain management strategies, and in environmental concerns helping to break down contaminants such as PFAS and to address nano and microplastics. But looking forward, I honestly believe the possibilities are endless. And I, I look forward to seeing what the students today accomplish with nanotechnology into the future. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. And, and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions.